and get to know some new talent. Norwegian champion there, Vita Heine of the Massey Tactic Team. Fantastic jersey there by her. And of course, the riders from the Lyft Racing Team. We have DSM. We have all the World 2 teams here at the start. Smiling faces for the riders. Maybe some nerves for some of these uh, riders because, uh, yeah, they haven't been around the World Tour riders that much. It's the highest echelon of racing, the UCI Women's World Tour race. And uh, yeah, these, these riders of the smaller Spanish teams, they usually ride their Copa España, the Spanish Cup races. So they will be equally excited and maybe a little bit scared to um, ride against the likes of uh, Anna van der Breche and Annemiek van Vloten. And as we're waiting for the live images, just soak in the fantastic views here of the river. And there we are, live images from the race, from the peloton, led by the riders of Jumbo Visma. They already lost one of their riders, unfortunately. Um, Nancy van der Burg, the Dutch woman, crashed and was brought to hospital. Um, couldn't continue the race, unfortunately. So she is already out of the race. But it's her team with uh, Rianne Marcus, Afke Soet, Jip van der Bos, Anna Henderson and Amber Kraak leading uh, the peloton at the moment. And they are in pursuit of a breakaway of six riders with some very big names in it as well. Uh, the riders, the group that basically attacked on the climb, um, and it shows in the quality of the riders we have in that breakaway. And I'm just waiting for the images of the breakaway to introduce them to you. So I'll leave you a little bit of suspense there as to uh, who the riders are in the break. Diana Marcus, the rider from uh, the Netherlands. And there we are with the first rider. Break is down to four riders, it seems. Last information we got was uh, six, but I count four riders. There we are, Corin Rivera there in last position. She bridged to the group on her own, so we can basically stop calling her a sprinter. In the purple, we have uh, Pauline Royakers. The Swiss national champion is Marlene Reusser. And in the purple from Canyon Tram, it's another Swiss rider, Elise Schabit. Originally, we also had Lucy Kennedy in the breakaway and Erika Manjaldi, but uh, they seem to have dropped from this first group as we um, make our way towards the finish line in quite a high pace. They seem to be working well together, and I cannot praise the effort by Corin Rivera enough. She was on her own bridging towards a group of five that attacked on the climb called Alto de Portela. It was a 15.2 kilometer long climb, averaging just over 5%, uh, making this one of the uh, more mountainous um, stages of this race, or mountainous stages uh, of the year as well. One of the riders of Trek Sigafredo attacking from the peloton. They have uh, quite a stellar lineup here with uh, the winner of the Grand Prix Plouet last Monday, uh, Elisa Longo-Borghini. They have Ellen van Dijk, former winner of this race, Audrey Cordon, Rago, Amelie Diederikse, Shirin van Androoy, and Taylor Wiles. Those are the riders representing Trek Sigafredo here, led by former world champion Giorgia Bronzini. As we reach the climb, which was uh, 57 kilometers from the line, we don't really have a long descent. We kind of stay on this plateau uh, around a thousand meters above sea level and then have some more climbs coming up. Um, small descents and then a few kilometers back uphill. It's, it's quite a challenging uh, course today with Marlene Reusser, of course, being super, super strong. Last week, she won uh, the time trial in the CIMAC Ladies Tour, another World Tour race, because, uh, well, we have a lot of races at the moment going on in the Women's World Tour. And Marlene Reusser was um, oh, absolutely the best of all the riders there in that time trial in uh, the CIMAC Ladies Tour. Counter-attack here by one of the Trek Segafredo riders. But it doesn't really seem to lead to uh, something. She kind of sits up here, looks over her shoulder. We're actually waiting for a, a time gap now.
Now we know that uh, Lucy Kennedy and Magnaldi are still 50 seconds ahead of the peloton, meaning that uh, these riders have a, a significantly larger lead. As we are in Aviega, one of the uh, towns alongside the river, and then we um, kind of make our way back west and then north towards Arua. The riders cross the finish line um, in the first part of the race. When everything was uh, still together after that um, uphill start, the race kind of evolves around the uh, ski station, Estación de Montaña de Manzanera, which is about 1,500 meters above sea level, and that's where the uh, race started today. So we had a downhill start to the race where nothing really happened and then uh, we crossed Arua where we are here which is one of the biggest towns in the region it's it's quite a desolate region here in uh, the province of Galicia the uh, Comunidad Autonoma the autonomous community of which um, Spain has from the top of my head 16 they have a lot of um, um, liberties as it goes uh, towards government depends a little bit on where you are in Spain and regions like the Basque Country, Catalonia, they have their own police force, their own tax department, etc. And other regions have um, um, a little less, well, let's say, privileges. But Galicia is uh, one of the older regions. It's quite rural, although um, there are some bigger towns here. And, well, the biggest of them all in, uh, in name is where we are going on Sunday. Santiago de Compostela, where... In the history, a lot of pilgrims went to the shrine of St. Jacob, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that on Sunday because uh, it's absolutely spectacular. We're now a little bit more towards the east of Santiago de Compostela, which is uh, almost on the coast, not entirely, but um, almost on the coast uh, on the uh, west part. If you look at the map of Spain, uh, we're basically uh, above Portugal at the moment about 100 kilometers north of the border with Portugal. And the region is absolutely stunning, especially when it's uh, dry and sunny like today. The team of uh, Movistar, of course, they are one of the home teams here, the only World Tour team from Spain. They have um, the Spanish riders here, Sara Martin Martina, very young talent from Spain. They have uh, Lourdes Oyardide and Sheila Gutierrez. And then from the USA, Leah Thomas. From Colombia, Paolo Patino. And the European champion from the Netherlands, Annemiek van Floten, who um, won the Tour of Norway and um, just comes off an altitude camp in Livigno in Italy. And, uh, of course, hopes to win uh, the race here. Tomorrow we have a time trial, which is an important moment for her, of course, being the former world champion. But if this group gets too big of a lead, especially with a rider like Marlen Reusser in it, it might be um, quite dangerous for the options or the chances for uh, Annemiek van Vloot of actually winning this race. So her team sets themselves at the front of the peloton to uh, try and catch them back. Team SD Works also involved there at the front. They're here with uh, Anna van der Breggen. Carol Canuel, Anna Shackley, Ashley Mormon, Lee Fisher Black, the rider in blue as best young rider. And it's the first road race as well for Kata Blanca Vash, one of the uh, most exciting new talents when it comes to women's racing. She was at the uh, Olympic Championship, uh, at the Olympic Games doing uh, the mountain bike. And there she is, the Hungarian national champion. Um, and there is Annemiek van Vloten as well in the uh, purple pinkish leaders jersey as leader of the uh, UCI Women's World Tour. Katablanka Fosch had a fantastic race in Tokyo on the mountain bike. She has had fantastic results in cyclocross as well, and she is also very talented on the road. It's one of the riders, she's one of the riders to watch uh, for the future. And this is her first race on the road, so quite an exciting moment for her and for us, of course, as bike fans to be watching uh, Katablanka Fosch in action. Um, we have some images of a crash, very unfortunate. I, this is Nancy van der Burg. Um, she is uh, off to hospital to get uh, a checkup. 
by the uh, doctors there. Unfortunate crash there for Nancy von der Burg. I'd rather not include these images, um, and hopefully she's fine. There we are again, Marlene Reusser. She's uh, still bearing the scars of a crash she had. And Corin Rivera, of course, she is by far the fastest in this group of four. But um, the finish here in Arua is basically a downhill stretch. And um, I could see somebody like Marlene Reusser attack from this group of four. We're still waiting for an accurate time gap between the two groups. Two minutes at the moment, which is, if, if you give Marlene Reusser two minutes in a time trial tomorrow, even though it's an uphill time trial, 7.3 kilometers, you might give away the uh, win in the race. So... Um, Especially Annemiek van Floten will be anxious to um, get Reusser back. Reusser as well has shown great progress when it comes to uh, racing in the mountains. She is, of course, from Switzerland, but um, not every road in Switzerland is uphill, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. But uh, Reusser is doing a great, great deal of work in... Um, in that breakaway and if we look at the uh, result in the tour of norway where we had an uphill finish in notfjell as well um, she was seventh there among all the big climbers so um this is a, a dire situation for annemiek van Vloot, but of course also for uh, sd works with anna van der brecht they don't have any representation in that first group a gap of two minutes and eight um and not a lot of room basically to make up for lost ground. Uh, same goes for Elisa Longoborghini, of course, of Trek Segafredo. Those are the teams that kind of missing out here. And now we see that the work is done by SD Works with the world champion there in second position. She has announced that this is going to be her last um, regular road race. After this, she's going to do the European Championships and she's going to do the World Championships at the end of the um, of the end of uh, September in Belgium, she already said, "I am going to ride in support of all these girls, all these women that have worked for me in the past." Um, it would have been a bit weird, of course, if she uh, won the rainbow jersey and then retired. But um, she said she's going to retire no matter what, even if she wins the rainbow jersey. She is going to retire. Last week in the uh, Simak Ladies Tour in the Netherlands, she already had her first little stint of DSing um, the race being behind the wheel of the SD Works team car. So um, yes, it's, it's going to be interesting, these last races of Anna van der Brecht, but still two minutes and ten seconds for our first group with um, Reusser, with Xabi, with Rivera and with Royakos. A little bit of discussion there with the uh, Canyon Shram manager, Ronnie Lauke, who's been part of the team for a long time. One of the uh, more established teams in cycling, going back quite a long time. A really interesting situation in this race. Um, especially Marlene Reusser, who is in absolute grand form at the moment. Of course, she was on the podium in Tokyo um, in the time trial, bringing home that silver medal uh, behind Van Vloten. And to be quite honest with you, um, I, I don't see how they are going to catch these four riders. Um, they kind of escaped with uh, five, to give you a little recap of what happened so far. Um, they escaped on the Alto de Portela, that long 15-kilometer climb, with five, um, also including Erika Magnaldi and Lucy Kennedy. Then, on her own, Corin Rivera bridged to this group. There she is, in the black of DSM. Magnaldi and Kennedy dropped from this group, and then four of them remain with a healthy two-minute lead on the competition. Last that we heard is that Kennedy 
and Manyal. They are still in between the peloton and this group, now led by uh, Anna van der Poel herself. But um, yeah, I don't think personally that with 27 kilometers to go, you're going to get Marlene Royce back unless you get some more riders to the front. But of course, Canyon Shram is not going to do any work. Ale Cipollini is not going to. Um, Ale Betise Ljubljana is not going to do any work. Same goes for lift racing. And of course, DSM, meaning that you have four of the nine World 2 teams who are not going to do anything um, to try and get this first group back. And if these gaps are accurate, um, this is the situation. And this is going to be the basis of this Sierra Tassit challenge by La Vuelta for the next uh, days. Um, great situation, of course, for the four teams at the front, but a little bit of a dire situation for Movistar with Annemiek van Vloten and, of course, ST Works there with um, Anna van der Breggen. Although, with Anna van der Breggen doing all the work herself, I kind of wonder um, if they don't have other plans in terms of uh, the captain of the team. Some other riders in the first group, there's Elisa Longo Borghini. Fantastic, fantastic ride by her on Monday. Also in this group still, uh, Belgian national champion, Lotte Kopecki. Not a really big group if we look at the jerseys here. It doesn't seem like there are a lot of the riders of the smaller teams still here at the front. We have uh, Anna van der Breggen doing a lot of work. Same goes for uh, Sara Martin. There's Van Floten, the leader of the uh, UCI World Tour. And she's got quite a healthy lead at the moment. She hasn't announced what she's going to do after the race today, whether she's going to do the women's tour, for example. Um, of course, she's focusing on the World Championships. And she's also doing the European Championships next week in Italy, although she's not going to do the time trial, which is an interesting choice. Um, leaving it up to Ellen van Dijk, um, who's got four of those titles already, and Rihanna Marcus. Sara Martin Martin is the rider at the front now. Promising youngster. Stroy does have some trouble with the uh, race radio. A little push there by the mechanic of lift racing. Royakas, who um, came into cycling quite late. She grew up in Canada and she grew up with um, ice hockey. <laughs> it's not something that you expect, but she grew up with uh, ice hockey, following her brothers to the rink there in Canada. And then uh, the family moved back to the Netherlands and she started road racing. And especially in the first years of her career, you could see that she was not super comfortable riding in the bunch, but she is learning fast. And if you Look at the results in recent years. It's been um, a steep uphill learning curve and equally the results that she's getting as well. Paulina Royakas. At 25k from the finish line, we are going uphill again. And then, well, we have, after the uh, start, we basically have the biggest downhill so far, going uh, all the way down to Santa Cruz and then to Arrua. We are still at about 700 meters above sea level uh, and then we go down all the way to 200 um, and then a little bit back up Finnish town here in Arua is 300 meters above sea level so uh, we'll be at the finish line quite fast with a, a long descent coming coming up and of course coroner Vera is already thinking about how she is going to win this race of course she has won um, some great World Tour races already. I remember, of course, that fantastic Tour of Flanders that she won with uh, Ellen van Dijk bringing back her to the first group and also the Trofeo Binda in Italy, the one that she won in the sprint. She's 29 now. Uh, Corinne Rivera has got uh, so many US titles um, already. And uh, yeah, next to that, uh, Ronde van Flanders, Tour of Flanders, uh, Trofeo Binda. She also won the uh, Ride London Classic and the uh, then called Ovo Energy Women's Tour GC. Uh, she's already been second in the overall classification here in Madrid. That was in 2018 when, yeah, the structure of the race was, was quite different. 
I think the Sierra to Seed challenge by La Vuelta is the perfect example of how women's racing has evolved. It started with a criterium on the same day as uh, the men, the last day of the uh, Tour of Spain for men. Then they added another stage, a time trial, and then they added another stage, and now we've moved all the way from Madrid and have um, yeah, completely separate from the men's Vuelta um, four stages. And I think it's a fantastic way of showcasing um, the progress that women's cycling is making at the moment. Malen Reusser, also a rider who came into the sport a little bit later. But she is um, quickly becoming one of the best, uh, well, at least time trialists in the world. She might just become world champion at the end of this month in Belgium. She's already been on the podium, of course. She was twice yest uh, yesterday, <laughs> last year, in, uh, in Imola. And she was uh, second in Tokyo at the Olympic Games. Well, on a good day, the 29-year-old from Jägersdorf in Switzerland could just beat the likes of uh, Ellen van Dijk and Annemiek van Vloten in Belgium uh, at the end of this month. It's a flat course. We are racing basically on the seaside in Belgium. Uh, the wind might be an important factor, but the time trial is one for the absolute powerhouses, and uh, Marlen Reusser is one of those. Also in this group, we have uh, Elisa Bosamo, the rider with uh, 111. She is uh, the former junior world champion from Qatar, from Doha, and she just announced her move to um, Trexiga Fredo for next year, being one of the uh, sprinters for the American team. And of course, she won the final stage of the Siratisi Challenge by La Volta last year. And she will be eager to uh, add another win. She was already very good in the um, CIMAC Ladies Tour, which was uh, well, kind of a wet edition in the Netherlands last week. Especially the weekend, Saturday and Sunday stages, both won by Marianne Vos, were bumpy. <laughs> Netherlands and uh, wet. And every image we have of this breakaway is basically Marlen Reusser doing the work. Reusser and Shabit, they know each other quite well. Of uh, course, represent the Swiss national team. Shabby was uh, quite disappointed that she couldn't ride the Olympic champion, uh, the Olympic Games, because uh, Switzerland only had one place. Um, they will have more places in Paris with uh, riders like her, um, like Reusser, and also young riders coming up, like uh, Noemi Ruk, young talent from uh, from Switzerland as well. Uh, they will have more UCI points and more places in Paris, but uh, they only had one spot in that super small Olympic peloton that we had in Tokyo, and uh, Royce took up that spot because, well, she was the uh, best candidate for the time trial. If we look at the um, uh, comp uh, comparison in speed, we see that the breakaway and the peloton are basically riding at the same speed, and the gap indicates this um, naturally because it's still two minutes. And like I said, if you look at the uh, profile of today's race, it's, um, it's kind of downhill from here. We go to um, the downhill now, or the breakaway is there, to uh, Santa Cruz. Then we have a little bit of a plateau of a few kilometers, and then another downhill all the way down to uh, Arua, where we are here, where the people are already lining up at the finish line. And then a little bit of flat, for the final uh, about two, three kilometers. So basically, for this peloton, there's hardly any place left to make up for lost ground. So um, I think we, we're going to see uh, the winner in that first group with Roy Akers, Rivera, Shabe, and Rivera. Rivera, Reusser, Shabe, and Roy Akers. All very experienced riders, of course, representing World Tour teams. Xavi for Canyon Shram, Royakas for Lift Racing, Corin Rivera for Team DSM. 
And they're now on the downhill part. And look at the magnificent images as we go towards Santa Cruz. This is, of course, if you're a bike rider yourself, an absolute fantastic road to descend on. Especially if you know that the roads are closed, that is. But nice, wide roads. And I think the... Judging from the shape of the peloton, they kind of accepted that this is it. And, of course, we still have a few stages to go. But with one uphill time trial and the climbing progress that Marlen Reusser has made, yeah. and if nothing dodgy happens in the uh, Saturday stage, which is quite a bumpy one as well, it's going to be incredibly hard for the riders in this group to... Um, gain some time. I think we, we have to basically come and see a very early attack happen on Saturday, which of course will be absolutely cool. But um, yeah, interesting that um, Rivera, who's taking in some gels at the moment, of course, uh, in the final 20 kilometers, you uh, focus on liquid um, feeds. Uh, you don't really start chewing anymore. So you uh, resort to your gels. Rivera has not been working at all. Um, of course, she has the sprint, especially against uh, Reusser and Royakos. The American rider has a big chance of, uh, of winning here. And the other riders seem to accept that Rivera is not doing any work. breakaway are now full swing into the descent towards Santa Cruz. Rivera's only won one race so far this year. She's been close uh, a lot, especially in the uh, Ladies Tour of Norway, which was second to Chloe Hoskin in the final stage there, and second to um, uh, Rihanna Marcus, of course, who uh, managed to uh, just stay away out of the peloton uh, from that breakaway. Fantastic win by Rihanna Marcus there in Norway. And she also was second at the uh, national championships in, um, in her home country of the US. That title went to Lauren Stevens uh, after a solo. Um, Rivera only won the, uh, the, the stage, the final stage in the uh, Giro Donne this year. She hasn't won a World Tour race yet. And she hasn't announced, or the team has not announced just yet, um, whether she will continue beyond the uh, 2021 season with the uh, Dutch team and Team DSM. She's been with the team. Uh, then called Sunweb since 2017 and uh, well of course won her most important victories all in the colors of Sunweb with the Trofeo Binda World Tour race and the Tour of Flanders of course. Um, I'm curious to see whether she will stay with Team DSM or maybe she will move on to another team. She's been sitting in fourth wheel, the smallest of the four riders by far and she's been sitting in that fourth wheel well basically the entire time we've been watching that breakaway so she knows what she has to do of course she knows that she is the one to beat on the finish line out of the uh, four riders up front and on the descent it's virtually impossible to make up town uh, time because yeah, at the front you have the same speed as in the peloton. The only time you can basically make up time is on the flat. If you have, for example, a, a stern headwind, um, then you have a big profit. You, you, you profit from the fact that you're in a peloton and can take shelter behind uh, somebody in front of you. But at this pace, uh, with most of the course that we still have left doing, downhill with speeds of over 80k an hour, they're just not going to get these four riders back. It's as simple as that. And... Uh, it shows that the Alto de Portela, the long climb that we had in the uh, second hour of the race, proved to be decisive. This, well, for today, at least.
There we are in Santa Cruz, meaning that we uh, descended about 400 meters from uh, our last climb. Now we have that little bit of a plateau, and this is yeah, this is what Spanish racing is usually about: really big roads. And well, I've been driving here uh, in the car, not on the bike, unfortunately. But um, there's there's not a lot of roads here. It's, it's quite a desolate part of the country, so. Um, these big roads are absolutely perfect for these two riders. Two Swiss riders there, Ili Shabit, who wore that fantastic Swiss national champion's jersey last year, and Marlen Reusser. With Rivera and Roy Akers. experienced riders in uh, well into their 20s fantastic little monastery here up the hill you just take a, a left turn from this big road where the riders are on at the moment and then you end up on this uh, rather magnificent uh, Santuario de Hermidas of course the uh, riders don't have any attention for the sprawling landscape that we have you have to be focused on the person in front of you as you reach speeds of up to 70 80k an hour which is uh, over 50 miles an hour um, on your bike it's great to see that the people here in Arua are very excited about the race it's about four and a half thousand people live here and uh, when we passed the finish line for the first time um, about two hours ago um, they were cheering everybody the peloton but also the riders who were dropped early on in the race. Everybody got a cheer and a little bit of applause, which is, uh, of course, great. Some last minute gels for Royakas as well. I wonder when uh, somebody like Marlen Reusser is going to make a move or whether her strategy is just to get a big enough gap uh, on the finish line to have uh, the safest of margins tomorrow where we basically do uh, the climb where we started today uh, most of the riders are staying in or around that ski station um, Estación de Montaña mountain station of Manzanera um, but we're now doing the climb uh, uphill um, that's the time trial tomorrow starting seven kilometers down and then seven kilometers back up again trying to manage your watts all by yourself which is um, quite a challenge to uh, to be able to push yourself into that hurt zone for oh, I think they will take around 20 minutes for that climb averaging 21 21 K an hour I think roughly that will be maybe even under 20 minutes but it's a short effort that the riders all of them are facing and although many of the uh, smaller teams have seen that their riders are already dropped of course they uh, are back tomorrow or most of them hopefully will be to uh, get their time in the spotlight we uh, we're going to be with you live from the first rider to the last tomorrow so we can uh, see all the riders in action on that time trial weather predictions for tomorrow great sunny and uh, lovely mountain air for the riders uh, to look forward to this is the little plateau that i was talking about and then we have uh, another downhill comparable to the uh, one we just did all the way to arua and then if you look at the stretch here at the finish line it's basically downhill and well you just need the biggest of gears that you can possibly get on your bike if you want to sprint downhill because well, if you have a gear that's just too small you're going to spin out of control here on the sprint so yeah I hope uh, for Corin Rivera that she's got a gear that's big enough but if somebody like Royce who has got the power who's got the watts has a little bit of a bigger ring a bigger big ring than Rivera well it might even be somebody like Shabit or Royce winning the sprint and nothing against <laughs> Nothing against Paulina Royakas, but I would be surprised if she uh, won the sprint of this group of four.
Marlene Royce doesn't look too stressed. Elise Shabit. Corin Rivera always in this upright position on the bike. And Paulina Roya, who seems to be suffering just a little bit, the rider of Live Racing. She is uh, 28 years of age, um, started back in 2012, uh, was, a, was a very prolific uh, talent all the way from the start and had some uh, trouble in the beginning. And she seems to be suffering just a little bit here uh, in this group of four. She hasn't been doing a lot of work either. It's mostly the two Swiss riders who've been doing the work in that group. A oh, little bit of a manoeuvre there by Shavit. Dr. Shavit, as she is a, um, a doctor. Last year, during the uh, COVID crisis, she, uh, she went to help in her local hospital um, during the pandemic because, yeah, basically she said, I had nothing else to do. And uh, just sitting at home is nothing for me. And just the, the statement, just matter of factly, that she said to me, um, yeah, I finished my degree in medicine and, and then I did some um, Olympic kayaking because she also did Olympic kayaking in London. Uh, and then I did some bike racing. It's like, does your, does your day also have 24 hours like mine? It's, <laughs> it's just amazing, the uh, talent of uh, Elise Shabit. Yeah, despite the work by uh, Shela Gutierrez there, we have uh, Iri Yonamine. Of course, she uh, will not be doing any work because her teammate is at the front, Marlen Reusser, the Spanish national champion there, Mavi Garcia. We have Taylor Wiles of Trek Segafredo. Also, the uh, champion from Slovenia is there. And also the Italian champion, the ever-smiling Elisa Longo Borghini with uh, well, possibly the most fun finish gesture of the year when she uh, soloed across the finish line in Plue on Monday. Sara Martin Martin is the rider of uh, Movistar, Iri Yonamine, the Japanese champion of uh, Tipco. The Tipco team with, uh, well, I could say the sensation of the season. Kirsten Faulkner, the uh, rider originally from Alaska, currently living in uh, Girona. Fantastic stage win for her in Norway. But uh, yeah, the gap is still two minutes. The first four riders, or basically just the two Swiss riders with Shabib and Reusser, are going just as fast as uh, the peloton, where there just doesn't seem to be an organized chase. I think Reusser mostly has the general classification on her mind. If she can win this stage, cool. Uh, there's 10 bonus seconds up for grabs as well. But of course, tomorrow is going to be her day. Elise Shabit. Maybe she's going to attack in the final few kilometers on the flat, trying to time trial away from the other riders. Rivera has got her sights set on a sprint and Judging from Paulina Roya, because I think she is the weakest link in this um, breakaway of four. Such a strong rider, Marlen Heuser. Final little kick up here. Seven and a half kilometers from the finish line. We have a final little kick of just a few hundred meters uphill before we uh, continue the descent towards Arua which is a regional center here in this um, Comarca which is a administrative region a lot of wine here as well as you can see and it was uh, like that since the um, basically Roman times this uh, place Arua was already um, in the history books or in the history journals written by uh, the um, very well-known uh, Roman historian uh, Pliny the Elder. But this uh, place in Galicia was basically stormed by a lot of peoples, uh, Vandals, Visigoths, um, 
because it's such a, a, a fertile region with all these rivers and lakes and uh, the wine region here as well. The peloton, yep, they, um, they will be around two minutes behind the leaders as we cross that three hour margin. Final six and a half kilometers for our breakaway with Reusser and Shabit, the strongest. They've been doing the most work in this first group. Royak seems to be struggling just a little bit there in fourth wheel. And Corona Rivera is just biding her time, just hoping that neither Reusser nor Shabit is going to attack to try and win this stage uh, solo. But yeah, all the way at the back of this group, we have the world champion Anna van der Brege, Nee Fisher Black, the best young rider there in that blue jersey. This peloton is um, beaten uh, by that first group. And tomorrow is a new day. But um, I think a very important um, moment was today on the climb when we look at the uh, overall general classification of this uh, Siratisit Vuelta Challenge. This is Leah Thomas, the American rider for the uh, Movistar team. She's going to switch teams as well next year. Great image there with all the uh, teams represented, especially the World Tour teams. All nine of them are here. And also uh, big non-World Tour teams like Jumbo Visma, Serati Sit, WNT and uh, Valkart travel in service. And then a lot of Spanish riders. Of course, I have to manage Team Tipco as well, one of the uh, biggest teams now at the moment, of course, due to the fantastic success of Kirsten Faulkner. But they will have to focus on tomorrow, on Saturday and on Sunday because the stage win is gone. It will be one of these four riders at the front winning that first Red Leaders jersey sponsored by Siratisit. There we are, 5k to go. Who's it going to be? Royakus, Rivera, Shabe or Reusser? One of the four, Fête Fougeux, make your choice. You see that the riders are already on uh, the biggest ring that they have, the biggest gearing that they have. And I think with this downhill finish, it will come down to who has the biggest gear to, to not just spin out of control because it's a downhill from the final kilometer to uh, the finish line. It's basically downhill straight to through the city center of Arua. Yeah, this is interesting. The two Swiss riders. Xabe is going to is going for it. She's going for that long range attack. There might have been a little bit of a discussion between the two Swiss riders. Of course, for Reusser, uh, the GC is more important. Is she going to chase Shabit? Is she going to bring back Rivera to her fellow Swiss rider? Of course, they're on different teams. They, they're not teammates like they will be uh, at, the national, uh, at the World Championships, for example, in Belgium. But is Marlene Reusser bringing back this group and just basically escorting Corin Rivera to the finish line? It looks like it. Uh, that's, that's trade teams for you. Of course, you can come from the same country, but you, you're paid by different teams. So, little attack there done by Elise Shabit. An absolute prime position there for Corin Rivera. The rider in the black jersey of uh, Team DSM. A Dutch team. Three kilometers. It's going to be fast until the finish line. It's basically downhill. Two riders at the front with uh, Sarah Martin, Leah Thomas, the uh, team of Volcar with uh, in third position Elise Balsamo. Live Racing. All the teams are here. Some of the riders of Massey Tactic as well. Great to see them in the first group, the uh, Spanish team. And still, the pace is more or less the same. Peloton are on that little dig uphill. But the gap is, was and will be around two minutes between our four leaders and the Peloton.
meaning that um, yeah, it looks like we have another attack, another little tempo there by Elise Shabit. And then Malay Rosa is going. Yeah, she just wants to double. She wants the stage win as well. Of course, she has won a, a lot of races, Marlene Royce, but mostly in a time trial. She hasn't got a lot of uh, wins, well, basically none, <laughs> uh, in a road race, apart, of course, from the Swiss National Championship. So, yeah, she would like to add this one just to get the time, the 10 bonus seconds, and just win a stage uh, on top of all the uh, time trials that she won. Marlene Royce on the flat, flattish running towards the finish line she is the strongest of them all despite the crash that she seems to have had um earlier this what well, looks like a very fresh want to see the front of the race there one and a half kilometers still to go for marlin royce and it's going to be flat flattish downhill about one two percent towards the finish line for marlin royce and look at that amazing time trial position that she has she has these um, almost, she's got these elbows flat, her wrists on the handlebars, her back is flat, trying to be as aerodynamic as she can be. Of course, she has got the talent. She is a fantastic time trialist, and she's just putting all the power on those pedals. And she's done a lot of work already in that breakaway, and now she is going for a win as well. What a magnificent ride here by Marlene Reusser. Look at that. Look at how big the gap already is as we are in the final kilometer here in Arua, where the crowds are at the finish line waiting for the Swiss national champion. She won, uh, of course, the time trial last week in, um, in the CIMAC Ladies Tour by a lot. She won the national time trial and road race title in Switzerland, but a quote unquote normal stage. Um, she hasn't won that one yet in her career. So this is going to be the first one for Marlene Reusser and uh, it's going to be one in style look at that the riders behind her are beaten final 300 meters still in that aero position trying to give all that she has on the finish line there she is Marlene Reusser the Swiss national champion she was the strongest in that breakaway of four and she shows it by her first road race win Fantastic win there by Marlene Reusser. And she has got a fantastic, fantastic margin on the competition when it comes to the time trial that we have here on Friday. What a magnificent athlete, Marlene Reusser. And then sprinting from... And of course, uh, Corinne Rivera. She would have won this sprint easily, but uh, Reusser just didn't want to catch... Oh, Corinne Rivera almost... <laughs> right over Royce who's on the floor here but she is absolutely happy and what a fantastic run she's had in the past four weeks with uh, time trial wins with fantastic uh, result there in that uphill uh, finish in the Tour of Norway showing that she's not only super strong in the time trial but she's she's gained confidence as a rider in in, in normal road races as well and this shows how incredibly strong she is. Marlene Reusser, the winner of today's stage. And now we wait for the peloton and the clock is ticking. And of course she will be another favorite for tomorrow if we look at the time trial, but how much energy has she spent today? Uh, energy that, for example, somebody like Van der Breche or Van Vleuten did not spend today. Uh, but yeah, she's, she's going to have a lead in the GC of almost two minutes, Marlene Reusser, uh, the 29-year-old the from Switzerland. Uh, Volker Travel and Service doing a lead out there for uh, Elisa Balsamo. We have Lotte Kopecki, the Belgian champion, still in this group, sprinting for a top 10. It's going to be Elisa Balsamo, then Anna Henderson in fifth place. Lotte Kopecki, and also in uh, uh, seventh place, Marie Lenet. And then the peloton crosses the line with the world champion, Anna van der Breche, and also with uh, the two leaders in the UCI Women's World Tour, Annemiek van Vleuten and best young rider, Neve Fischer-Black. So, the first and longest stage has been well, I think decisive for the general classification. It will be incredibly difficult for the peloton to come back 
from a two-minute um, gap on somebody like Marlene Royce, especially with the time trial coming up tomorrow. But it also shows and also uh, means that the other riders will have to attack in the other stage on Saturday. And uh, who knows, we'll see a long-range attack by somebody like uh, Annemiek van Vloten, just for the sake of it, because she can. Elise Shabit, Corinne Rivera and Paulina Royakos were in that group together, but the strongest of them all 